going to open this meeting with public comments. Um, Henry, you're on the agenda, so um, if you want to reserve your comments for when we actually have you on the agenda. I'm going to take you a little bit out of order because I put you in from 5.50 to 6.05. So we'll, we'll just reverse tonight. But I don't think we know you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. Molly. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, would you like to make a public comment? Are you here to make a public comment? Um, this is actually my first meeting. I'm Henry. We haven't met yet. I'm Linden. Yes. It's a new member of our committee. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Well then. I liked her name. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, in that case, um, there's no public comment, and we're going to go on to approving the minutes of the last two okay. meetings. The second set of minutes, I did not. Sure, I guess I'll just say I'll take it. Yep. Okay, so just take notes. Yeah. I didn't forget. I didn't, and I didn't put the to do's on there. Right. I'll add those later. Under Tree Warden Report, second page, second bullet, mm -hmm. Rob, Rob, Jen, and Molly were sent to Lincoln. So just move the H. I need to accept both sets of minutes. Second. Um, can we do one at a time? Because I, I was absent, so I'm oh. going to vote for the 16th. Oh, okay. Yeah. I move to accept the first one. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, abstain? I'm going to abstain on that one because I was absent. Okay, so the second is May 16th. We need a motion. I'll move again. Move okay. To Accept the minutes. Second that. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Abstain? Yeah. Okay. Minutes have been accepted as amended. And on to our regular review of the to-do list. 
How's everyone doing on their news? Done. Okay. All right. As a reminder, please look at the um, the Google spreadsheet that Marilyn faithfully updates. Chair report. Uh, I think I have two things to report, some of which will probably overlap with you, Rich. Um, one is that some of you were at the Tree City USA ceremony last week. I think it went very well. It was a fairly good attendance for folks coming all the way out to Western Mass. Uh, lovely day, lovely setting. Rich and I gave the keynote presentation and the mayor was also there and stayed through the whole thing. I think it went well. It was a great presentation. It went very well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's that's nice to hear. Um, and trying to think of any next steps that came out after that. Our next speaking engagement. Our next gig. Pay gig. Pay gig. Yes, they're paid now. That's right. We're going on a road show. Uh, yeah. I. Nothing. You know. No. No. Nothing except for I invited Henry and his committee to come here, and so here they are. So that that's wonderful. Um, if you want to say anything yeah, I just, I just wanted to recognize um, <coughs> Hampton was there with, uh, you know, Rob, obviously his commissioner as well, uh, Sue and Alicia. And um, um, your fourth leg of the stool. Um, the, um, Jonathan was Jonathan. signed up. Something must have come up. So I, I, just, I, just want to I just want to recognize them. Uh, just I for the fact that they actually made it there and this year they got their picture actually with us all accepting the award which was nice so mm -hmm. it was uh thank part, you and, part, and really the, part of the growth award is really uh obviously it's all of us collectively but Trina Hampton has really filled in the bottom half of that for us to continue to get the growth award two years in a row so thank you yeah so. thanks for yeah. including us oh yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um and then the other thing was that last night a number of us uh, Sue was there, Rich was there, I was there, and Paige, I don't know if anybody else was able to make it, to the planning department's um, climate vulnerability forum. 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 Um, yes, and I um, I did decide that I was going to go because I had um, learned that this one wasn't actually the earliest stage of this process. There have been some so by invitation only workshops prior to it, focus groups. Um, and so I felt like um, there needs to be a greater presence of our opinion at the table. And I think it was interesting. There were a lot of big breakout groups and it felt like there was someone speaking for trees at every single one of them. Um, so after, after concluded, um, everybody submitted uh, recommendations for action steps and things like that. And I recommended that Rich as tree warden be included in the core team because there's a, there's a core team of this whole planning process that will take place over 18 months. And as you know, I have requested ad nauseum to the city that um, representatives for trees be at the planning table at the earliest possible stage. So I made this very clear. So I not only submitted it in writing, I requested it personally of Wayne Fyden. Um, and uh, he said that as long as there was work, uh, Rich worked it out with his bosses, the mayor and um, Donna, that it was fine that, she, that he could be there. So I felt that that was a mission accomplished. Who else is that on that core team? Um, he heads of departments. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, who else? Uh, uh, office, oh, the three key people in planning. So the three members of the planning department, Carolyn Mish, Sarah LaValle, and, and um, Wayne. And then like the health, health the health director, um, Donna from DBW. Yeah, Donna, heads of all the Donna, departments. Donna, David Valletta. Um, oh, and then stormwater. Stormwater, stormwater manager, Doug McDonald. Yeah. So what Wayne did send her an email today asking Donna to uh, that he would like to have me work on the green infrastructure working group. So we did that this morning. Perfect. So I was going to suggest that we put something formally in writing, but it sounds like that is not necessary. No, I think I can. I think I convinced them after. Right. Um, I, one of the things I did learn is that in these, uh, uh, these uh, focus groups, these working groups that came up prior to this meeting, um, green infrastructure was one of the, the recommendations that came out of them. Mm -hmm. It was an emphasis on green infrastructure. Were so all the working groups something to do with infrastructure or are they more broad? 
They are a combination of, uh, as they refer to them, as uh, low-hanging fruit projects. So there's, so this working group already identified ten projects um, that I think would be more like soft projects, not brick and mortar projects. So mm -hmm. a lot of the projects already have pieces of them in pro in process, which is one of them is our planting, uh, our, our tree planting, for example, is one of them. Um, but I think it's going to be. I did taking those 10 projects um, and developing a plan to get those 10 projects accomplished because I believe the money, the 400000 can be used for design to do these projects, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, engineering design or what, you know, of any kind of, and then there's also the money's available for construction. Great. So it was great to have Sue stand up and say some words about uh, the importance of trees. It was just great to hear it come from different segments of the room. So thanks for making the effort. <coughs> I appreciate having you. Thanks for getting the word out. Yeah, sure. Last minute, because it just appeared in the paper yesterday morning. Um, all right, so that are th those are the two items on my chair report. On to tree ward report. All right, um, I don't have any public shade tree um, commission, I mean, I'm sorry, any public shade trees, no requests, no schedule for tree hearings. So that's a good thing. A um, couple of items. Uh, they may overlap. I, I had, had a conversation with um, a couple of representatives from National Grid in regards to the CDH planting um, and potentially partnering with National Grid so they would actually bury the overhead utility. It's on the left-hand side of the entrance. Try, I'm trying to push them along to see if they'll partner with us and actually basically do all the work okay. so we can plant uh, public, large public shade trees in that tree belt. Um, which would tie in with the other planting project that was on the other side of the hospital that we still have to work on. So we could potentially have something put together uh, for CDH that included a combination of tree belt plantings now and uh, setback plantings. So I'm waiting to hear back from the engineering department. But um, Joanne DeRose, who's the outreach person for National Grid for Western Mass, emailed me and said that the grid was interested in partnering or doing what they possibly could to help us, which would include burying the wire removing one or two poles that are not, or just carrying poles that aren't necessary. So would they do that as a donation? That's what I'm that's my goal. Great. My goal is to it would transform that space. It would totally it would. transform that space yeah. and then that also would tie in the planting that are going to happen farther down on um, right. North Elm Street. So that whole mm -hmm. so potentially in this whole year by the this season before the planting season planting season is over, we could have that whole place planted. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Which would be huge. Oh, so the timeline is that fast? Uh, if, if, I don't know how fast they're going to move, but uh -huh. it would be nice to have a commitment for them to actually do the work and get the utility buried. And then even if we have to do a multi-season planting to make the whole thing happen, at least we can possibly move to plant the tree belt. And the nice thing that would fit in with that is that uh, our conversations with John, was that his name? Uh, John Lombardo. John Lombardo. Was the <laughs> Just day, you one know, letter the, more than my their, 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 their vision was to, you know, he want, he liked the idea of having large mature trees, but he wanted to be able to have the ability for people to see the hospital. So that really fits in right there because people going by the hospital, the trees are large enough, the lower limbs are raised up, and you can actually look right into the parking lot. Provides them with shade, provides the street with shade, yeah. the restrooms with shade. So Great. it could be a win win. So. Yeah. Are they going to bury it, I assume, somewhere that's not where the tree roots are? They would bury it probably right between, we would just plant right on top of it. Oh, you can do that? Sure. Oh. It's not going to hurt. What is the, the elect electric bike pad? That's going to the right or the left? It's going to the right on the other side of the um, it's going bus, near bus the shelter. Bus shelter, right. So that still leaves us with a lot of room to work with. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. How long a stretch of road is that? Which Ball fields. <coughs> so six, 600 to uh, 700 feet. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Did you have a say in how where the electric bike pad got um, sighted? None. No. Mm -hmm. And this is this is yet that that bone of contention that I I, I constantly have. Yeah. Um, so we you know we, we have, have the same problems. Yes, we have in the past requested uh, you know how to sit down with the mayor and planning department and say bring us to the table the earliest possible of every city. So when when we found out that this was going in, it was yet another reminder to them that they need to loop us in early while they're planning these things. 
Because we also we almost I'm um, in front of the post office. We wanted to plant trees, and I checked with Ray. He said, "No, there's a bike path going there." Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so this was classic conflict where like the right hand's not affecting the left hand. So we we need to keep working on that, and we're just going to keep pressing it. Yeah, good. <laughs> Same thing we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the other two other items, uh, the significant tree ordinance is there is a proposal to potentially change the significant tree ordinance to change the formulation uh, between how we identify what is a conifer as a significant tree and a deciduous significant tree. So speciesism. Well, I think it, in, my, in my mind it's all benefit. It's all benefit driven, but that's a whole other story. So I'm in the process of reviewing that and sending my comments back to the uh, planning department. What's behind this? What's the motivation behind this? I think the motivation behind it is the fact that there is that uh, very large dog park that is up off the Glendale Road that is a mature uh, eastern white pine stand mm -hmm. um, that's never been developed. It's, you know, I don't know if it's they got to be probably 150, 20 years old in there. You know, it's been logged a few times, I'm sure, but there is a considerable amount of eastern white pines that are going to have to be removed <laughs> to accommodate the roadway that's going to go in there um, and the walking paths and what I have whatever else they're planning on doing in there. So um, they are, they have produced an inventory. I haven't seen it yet, um, but the mitigation for them, that group that's developing would be huge if it was the way that ordinance presently reads. Um, but I, just, I reached out to Rick Harper today and I've got some good, um, some good papers that were written about the, about the eco benefits of pines versus deciduous and how important pines are in the urban forest, in the urban canopy, I should say. So I'm, I'm going to read those first, and I'm going to make my comments based on the information, provide the information, and tell them that I probably disagree with. Who, who is driving this uh, potential revision? A combination of the planning and the very office. So just two years into this brand new ordinance, they're thinking about revising it to accommodate a single? That was my question, and I was told no. <laughs> Seems like it. Mm. Okay, so will you keep us in the loop because I feel like this is a, 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 a voice that we should bring to the table when it's well. I, the, the, I, the process is going to be once that the they're the I recommended that once I review it and make my comments and it goes back because I'm sure I hopefully they'll change it based on my comments uh -huh. okay. um, that it'll come from the commission like it did before and then the commission can make its recommendation to okay. myself and the mayor. Um, so it's not it's not just gonna not it's not gonna not make it here. It's gonna make it here. But okay. I have some pretty good data, I think, that basically kind of debunks the the theory that, you know They're a junkier, yeah. less valuable tree. I see. Okay. So that's kind of my uh -huh. angle and I kinda wanna make sure that I have that data driven information. Uh -huh. um, other than saying that yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like white pine, you know, that's yeah. not gonna you know, that's not really gonna be the answer they're looking for. So Okay. So that's something I'm working on mm -hmm. there on the um, it, has anyone noticed, are there a lot of white pines in our inventory of, of trees that... You know, I, I, to be honest with you, I have not... I didn't look, think I didn't I look, look that up. I didn't look either. Or, you know... There are, there are a lot of white pines, especially in Ward 7. Seven. Ward 7, the outlier, Ward 6, yeah. Hmm. Okay. But that's where they would be. The Along the streets? Yeah, they're, they're rural roads. Those are all county roads that are like 66 feet wide, so you capture a lot of. But they're protected uh, under MGL. This yeah, is this yeah, is this yeah, has to do yeah. with when you know yeah. a, a piece of private property yeah. falls into the permitting process. Yep, yep. And then I'm just wondering, like, to what extent conflict is coming under into our view at all? I mean, I can't I, I can't think of a single tree that's a street tree that's a but yeah, they're pine. Yeah. They never plant them. Yeah. Yeah. Right, they're more backyard or set yeah, they're, they're, they have not really been planted purposely. They're just there because they're there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, uh, quickly, is that Rob and I spent the afternoon yesterday at Northern Nursery in West Southfield actually hunting around looking for some nursery <coughs> stock. Found some nice material to supplement our present order that we have from Amherst Nursery and other orders we've taken, like from uh, Juan Six and Hadley. So we're going to be taking uh, order from them. And hopefully they they also actually he just sent me an email uh, telling me that he actually found a couple of growers that would actually grow uh, nursery stock and grow bags oh, really you can get them yes wow. so potentially it might be another outlet for us to, to get some some stock that volunteers can handle that's not b and b 
is all the stuff we're going to be getting is B&B. All the small. stuff from Suffield? Yes, it's two inch though, and then the balls were not ginormous, so that's really a word. It's not like we're, they weren't very large. They, they were manageable. You know, we're trying to we're trying to make it so the DPW does not have to be involved in the actual physical planting unless it's large planting projects or okay. high uh, high traffic areas. So these folks can go and do the work, and then we just come behind them and pick all the materials right. up. Right. Um, well, the other thing is that we have so we have the revisions. So if anyone doesn't have one, this got this is revised. So I don't know who does anyone want new copies. Well, if you like them. To that point, guess. what do you want us to do with old ones? Do you want us to, to, to give you back the bits and pieces so that you can re, or at least the you know, raw um, material here? Probably the raw material, we could okay. reuse them. Okay. But these are revised, the page numbers have changed. changed. There's, oh, been okay. a, there's been additional trees put in here. There's been additional comments about not planting um, the ash trees. Okay. Um, there's a whole section in the back that uh, talks about the you know, mm -hmm. Well, section in the back that talks about um, we, we kind of mixed it up a little bit we actually added a whole bunch of information from DCR yeah. I point, but I want to make sure that um, our guests looks get great okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. are you concerned about planting Vermont native trees yeah. well, it's reverse climate change yeah it's all right we're, we're hoping <laughs> we're hoping for the best uh, and there's a section in the back about tree about tree oh. tree tree protection uh, during construction, which is, uh, you know, it's a work in progress, so there's four pages of solid information there, which is going to be great. And we did adjust it so the uh, trees of the planning that are on the, under the, the trees that are already listed under the subdivision <coughs> rules and regulations um, are all in there. So the only ones that we extracted from the subdivision rules and regulations were the ash trees. So um, hopefully, hopefully the planning board will adopt that. Good. Yeah, we're going to leave them in there. But I'm very impressed with this booklet. This is amazing. Thanks. Yeah. And, a, and a thanks to Alicia from True Northampton because she, she and I like worked like for a week and a half at night back and forth just making sure all the corrections were done. We still we, we missed the DCR um, sure, acknowledgement, but I'm going to yeah. fix that. I'm just leaving yeah. the books in yeah. there. Yeah, uh, you know, that can be the next version. The other thing that uh, Alicia worked on is this tree preservation area. So in conjunction oh, with, in conjunction with the use of the, of the enforcement of significant tree ordinance, oh. so or if there's work to be done around a uh, public shade tree then requiring someone to protect, these will be attached to the fencing material um, outside of the critical zone. That's great, that's great. Right. So, yeah. I'm just so I got a hundred of those. Oh, good. I don't know if any of you all have noticed, but I'm watching that beautiful uh, oak tree behind the Academy yeah. music going to the mass Yeah. Just so. such, such a loss. Yeah. I wonder if we should do like a video project. Or if it's just, Recon. this is what not to oh, do. That's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, if we capture it over the seasons and the years. Well, all right, the anything year. else? No, no, no that's it. No. Seasons. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, um, Todd, you're leading the next section. Of, uh, actually, um, Henry, I'm just realizing that if we want to get you in, if we want to have a conversation with you, we should probably have it now. What we have had on our agenda is we're working on a three-year planting plan, and we're sort of doing the planning of the plan, and it involves working in subcommittees. Um, uh, we're going to have a, a site review committee, and we're going to have a yearly planting priorities committee that identifies our priorities. but. Um, you know that's get, we're, Tad's going to lead that discussion, but we want to make sure we have we have a conversation with you all before you you have to leave. Okay, great. Thanks. So let's just reverse it. Is everyone okay with reversing the, the order of the agenda? Okay. Yeah, and if I just uh, do we want to do we want to print what you sent me so we don't have a copy? Of I yeah, I don't have a way to print it though because uh, we don't have a closed. connection. Yeah, I don't have any connections here. <laughs> no, are they all gone? They're, I believe so. Yeah. All right. Well, so I went to the Tree City USA uh, gathering and, um, you know, hearing about your committee from this report is like you meet twice a month and you're like doing all these things and I feel like we're more treading water and we've had some successes, but I was like, what do you talk about twice a month and how does the committee run? 
because I find um, we have some committed people who are doing some good stuff, but primarily, um, and it's sort of similar, primarily it's me and the tree warden talking during our, our meetings. And I'll ask what people think, and they're like, sure, it sounds good, but I don't get a ton of response. This project people are working on, but um, other people aren't working on anything, and so I'm trying to get new people on and get each person to have a project. So I hadn't met Linda yet, I didn't know you were a woman, and I was like, yes, that's surprised. all I had was an email and a name. But um, we're getting some new people on, and that's exciting. Um, we're having a lot of the same trouble with you. We're, we met with our planning department. We met with our zoning board of appeals. We're going to meet with the um, whatever it's called the, for access for handicapped people. Whatever that committee is. Uh, Disabilities commission or something. Accessibility. Accessibility. Oh, accessibility. Accessibility. Yeah. Oh. We're meeting with all the groups in town to say, this is what we want. We hear that you say you want it, but this is what's not happening. Like this big development came in and they built right up to the sidewalk, oh. so it's not an inch of room to put in a tree. So, you know, that part of that's by the law, but the planning board and the zoning board of appeals have some say, and they were both very supportive, and it was a good meeting. I, again, I don't know what'll happen. The next development will come up. We try to watch for them. I have someone who mm -hmm. keeps an eye on all the town buildings, what they're doing, and uh, so we find out too late for things, so it's a challenge. Did they change the zoning? They didn't change the zoning. That would be, we can't change the zoning right now because we just changed our town government to a city government, and until the city government comes in, we can't do anything, can't have new people yeah. join the committee. Mm -hmm. um, at least they did send around a thing saying people whose terms were up or on until further notice, so otherwise I wouldn't be on the committee anymore. Uh -huh. um, so it was, yeah. You know, we had that period of treading water for about a year. It wasn't even treading water. We were drowning. Um, where the city was going through a charter review and everything was put on hold. Yeah. And so this commission didn't exist until after that process was done. So that was a frustrating time. Yeah, so uh, we did hear, um, I heard yesterday that the select board is going to take up finishing our ordinance. We finally, after two years of work, got an ordinance all done, got it for town meeting, and the night before town meeting, the town manager changed it and pretty much gutted it. Mm -hmm. like, what, yeah. what, what was in the ordinance? It was just, you know, protecting trees, uh, requiring $90 for stuff that we do as policy, but is not yeah. encoded. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a formal ordinance that says this is exactly the plan and the process for removing trees, et cetera. And um, he said all that stuff should be approved by the select board rather than the town meeting, because then you can change it with the select board. You don't have to go back to the meeting. I didn't want to do that, but anyway, we figured great. Well, at least get something passed, select like what will pass it quick, and then the, or the uh, new town government change happened, and mm -hmm. it's like what wasn't going to hear it in mm -hmm. November. We don't even know what the new government's going to look like yet. But they agreed to finish it, so I think we'll have our ordinance in. We work in Mali. We don't have a significant tree ordinance, so though. Something I heard that the uh, Tree City USA and the Coast did. So mostly I just wanted to come and just observe what you guys do and uh, figure out how to. Yeah. Are, you, are you still in the 2000, the original 2003 Yeah, phase? so we, it was a three year thing yeah. and we extended it, I think, two years. But this June, that money's gone. So mm -hmm. I think we'll get up to about 1,600 trees by then. So we're pretty well treated. And Alan, a tree one's a little concerned about planting too much because then we're going to have a constant age you know, class. Mm -hmm. 50 years from mm -hmm. now, there won't be a lot of space for mm -hmm. new trees. Mm -hmm. so I hear that and I'm anxious to just get So in other words, he's taken down all of the hazardous trees and all of the, he's already worked through because not only do we have 2,000 sites identified, but we have another 1,000 trees that are poor to dead health and so need to be taken down as well. You've um, already done all of that? We haven't taken them all down, but they've been identified most of them. And, uh, with the help of a different uh, utility, it's ever source, but uh, before it was ever so we had a great relationship where a guy would come to our meetings and Alan would say, while you're at it, could you take down these trees and save the town a lot of money? Mm -hmm. And because of that, we gave him a little more leeway when he said things need to come down. We pushed back on some trees, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and there's always new trees dying. Now the sugar maples are dying left and right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That dropped two summers ago, just did yeah. everything yeah. Yeah. Getting tons of calls about uh, the gypsy moths. Yeah. 
terrible this year. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not on this side of the river? No. I don't think I'm aware of a couple. I saw yeah. it's all of a sudden we did not have them a oh, year wow. or two ago when it was getting Well, wow. Maybe so they just move a certain distance, whatever you call it. Yeah, here. Yeah. Mark's down the pike and said, California. Yeah, I didn't get it. So I haven't seen a lot of defoliation, but I'm getting anecdotal reports. So do you have any? Do you have any lessons learned from us having gone through now this last five years of planting 1,600 trees, like what to do and not to do? Um, I don't. So we have a very different structure. I mean, mostly Alan's planted the trees. We do a planting once a month. And it's more for publicity and get people aware of trees. But he does the bulk of the planting because he had the funds from the $600,000 bond issue. Yeah. So when that ends, then more of it will fall on us. And do you know if he adhered strictly to the um, recommendations from the inventory of where we should plant? It did, was that part of your inventory to identify sites? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Just to identify what's there. It was only to identify what's there. So okay. we recommend like, hey, what about College Street? There's very few trees in the street. He'll come up with his own ideas. And then uh, we had one developer, who, not a developer, a, a uh, real estate management company that manages most of the big student housing. And I've worked with him once because one of his residents really wanted trees, and we put in some trees in his development. And he came to us and said, can we get more trees for our other development? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, great. So we've been working with him, and um, I'm trying to reach out to other property managers, but I'm not having much success with that. Um, so we've planted even not on public-owned streets, but in his development streets. We've been able to do that with some of our 2,000 trees. So. Mm -hmm. And that's been a great thing because these are mostly either student housing or low-income housing, and there's just not a lot of trees in there. They have buildings and ground. Their grounds people just want to mow everything. You know. But they're considered setback trees, like they're yeah, within yeah. 20 feet of the public, public of the public right one. Yeah. And Alan won't plant in the tree belt unless it's really wide. And I love that I'm driving through Northampton and you got trees in these narrow tree belts. I've been pushing him on that, but he's like, they're not going to last. He's like, well, let's try it. Interesting. Well, time will tell, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have some sense of caution about some tree belts as to whether they'll support a tree or not. Yeah, you know, obviously some are not going to support Right, but, uh, exactly. But then we're reminded of, you know, of er real cities like New York where they're dealing with, you know, two by two spaces yeah. and they, they do okay. Not all of them, yeah. but some of them can do okay. The right tree. <laughs> You have trees being broken by, like, I assume college students. So we plant anywhere so near student housing. <laughs> we've had, hey, we've had trees, trees stolen, like moved out of the ground completely yeah. with the roots. We've also had trees just snapped off. Oh. We, have, we, have, we have string trimmers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. it's more yeah. accidental. And they are serious. I mean, yes. we, we, we have a significant string loss trimmers. from yeah. string trimmers. Mowers. Oh. Those little things that do what the yeah, grass. Okay. And we have a significant number of trees yeah. blocking that. And then and, and some from cars and getting them in mowers. Right. But I think it's I think it's more accidental. I don't think it's in quite into I don't know. Have you guys seen yeah, it? My mother lives in a college town and they have the same issues with the plant trees and they get pulled up in Oneonta, New York. So Northampton's very gentle on the trees. We put very weak little trees up. And amazingly, I mean, you, you step away and think, why would that be there two years from now? And the other thing I noticed in this book is my favorite tree right now, which is the Turkish hazelnut trees. I mean, yes. Great street tree. They fit on the wires. They're paired with all the nuts and delicious. I should have brought some of you guys, but <laughs> yeah. come to us. Well, we, we did plant some, but I can't, uh, I don't think we've got nuts yet. It takes at least 10 years. Ten years, okay. So we've got another five, ten years. My northern pecan tree that I have produced after twenty years. I got my first nuts mm -hmm. last year. Okay, oh. if I read that you, we will get pecans, but they won't ripen. Is that not? I got twenty nuts on the tree. This is the first two, the tree's been around twenty years. And can they nuts that can be eaten? Yeah, they're great. They're fantastic. Oh, that's neat. We haven't tried those as street trees yet. Oh. We've got one in our nursery. Oh, cool. One. Okay. Thanks for the advice on the cool. nut trees.
Yeah. Lyndon, did you want to say anything or share anything? I don't have a whole lot to say just because this is actually the first meeting I've ever been to, so it's interesting that it's not one of ours, but uh -huh. um, I like hearing what you want to see from the committee and being here is like kind of an example of how you want things to be run a little bit differently. I think it'll help in future meetings to come, so thank you for Thanks having me here. Glad well, to have you. And we, does we demolished Robert Hill's avoid, by the way. Was, I, oh, you did? I don't have the patience to uh, get, like, right. you approve the minutes. Like, yeah. all right, what do you think? Any chance of the minutes? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, you're on my good. Yeah. I, don't, I stopped doing this. Yeah. Stuff, that's a I hear. I, I'm not saying you should. Just yeah, saying. no. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I quite love Robin's <laughs> rules. Um, all right. Any other questions from members of our committee? Is, is there strength in numbers uh, and any value of um, having any kind of shared workshop with our other departments or department heads or boards about the integration of? shade trees into the permitting and legal landscape? I think you're doing it, you know, from what Lily was describing, it, it's a constant thing you have to keep reminding them, keep going. It's like, all right, meet with the select board pretty regularly, meet with the planning board, which we hadn't been doing before, and just keep reminding them of stuff. So. I think it, our, our, here in Northampton, I think it's gonna be hard to get a permit without Rich knowing about the, isn't that Yeah, right? well, so one of the big, one of the, Big advantages at the moment, given our circuit, this situation is that I'm the, I'm the highway superintendent on top of it. So I review all of the permits, trench permits, driveway permits that come across, that come into the department. So I can actually, I have the ability to um, flag things before there's construction damage or before there's issues related to uh, public shade trees and then a significant tree ordinance adds a whole other layer to that. Good. So, it, it you guys have a regulatory ordinance? No, we're, we're I mean, that's something we're thinking about is strengthening the um, powers of the tree warden, warden via a, a, a local ordinance. Yeah. And do you have so you have one? So, we passed one, it, it was pretty much gutted, but yeah. hopefully, the select board. Will oh, put okay. In all so, the this things. is the one you're referring to. Can you share that language with us? I'm happy to send it to yeah. you. Yeah. Rich, I thought part of the permitting process was going to include a check off to having to do with the. We got that, just got that on our checklist a few months ago. Part of the proposal? Well, that, that is, that already sort of exists, that exists with the significant tree ordinance. Um, there is an actual designation that I have to get a set of plans and do the site plan review. Um, right now, the permitting process, um, the only mention of public shade trees is in the uh, drive new driveway permit. Yeah. So in bold the letters on the front talks about NGL chapter 87. Okay. But um, I think Todd and I can speak to that um, when we're going to cover that in this meeting. Um, it's not no, on there. No, it's actually not on no, today. Okay. All right. Sorry, so may not have anticipated it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to Todd and I are going to speak to that after our. So okay. we actually on all um, developments that happen, there's a check box for have you talked to the public safety committee? Okay. So, oh, we go to and the still, you know, some. You know, we just yeah. it's big solar developments going in on my road, and uh, the company that was doing it forgot to, and nobody from planning was kind of noticed that it wasn't checked off, or maybe it was checked off illegally. And so then, after the fact, they came to us, and you know, it was like no chance of saving those trees because they had already started building the roads. And if, you know, yeah. <coughs> it's, it's just interesting. And then the last thing I want to share is. Um, I want to work on some statewide initiatives to change the complete streets uh, yes. I'm glad you brought that and up. to green streets. And uh, I talked to Solomon Goldstein Rose about it once, and uh, then I kind of dropped the ball. I was too busy. But um, is I'd this like to see is this a legislative thing or a regulatory thing? It's a legislative. Thing. It is complete yeah. streets is legislated. Yeah, I see. And that's what the Mass yeah. DOT uses. The complete streets guidelines. You know, we don't have no space for complete streets. No, no, it eliminates trees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So it just pushing. favors sidewalks and sidewalks, bike paths, funding, yeah, if curb cuts, uh, you bus pull-offs, build yeah. those things. Right. I mean, I support all those things, but you know, not at the expense of trees. Right. So, are, are you? Part of a group of people that are trying to change this, or it's just me. So far, so <laughs> uh, Alan is a strong supporter of that thing. Yeah, there's people that are supporters. No one's doing any work. Any work on you it? Know, okay. I took the initiative to contact the Salt Lake City Rose, but it's Gold City. It's Gold City Rose. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's pretty significant, I think, for Northampton because we have a lot of streets with sidewalks on one side. And so as complete streets kicks in, in theory, I guess that could change. I'm looking at that anyway. Yes, it's yeah. Bye Bye Greenbelt. Oh, no. It's what? Bye Bye Greenbelts, as we've seen in every project that has yeah. already gone. So that's why we have to fill every one of them up. Right. It's <laughs> yeah. a yeah. 20 inch. Yeah. 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 What trumps what? 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 What well, what trumps what is it? If you fill up the tree belt, it's then the public right away. The protected public shade trees. You have to have the public shade the trees. State. State really well. Right, but it's not. This is. It's only in state highways. There are no state highways in Northampton. Yeah. I see. All right. Well, so there you go. There's our justification for putting trees. a tree in every tree belt. So what you're saying is it's not enforceable in the city unless it's a state highway. It, that that's cor that's correct. Complete the street. They can they can widen the roadway. The hi the, hi the highway the highways can widen Except the roadway. Except that oh, you're going right. to get money from the state for new road projects, and that money is going to be required. It's going to require you to have complete streets for some of that money. Mm. It is a dilemma. Yeah. Well, what has yeah. to be done to change it legislatively? Mm. I mean, getting you know grouped together and saying this is important. This is why it's important. This is what we want to see. How we want to see it changed. Be writing some drafts up and then contacting state legislators and uh, yeah. getting some lobbying. Money. Yes, lobbying. Well, I'm much starved, but I hope Northampton can be a partner in helping you yeah. get there. Yeah, because it's pretty important. It's just an idea that I had. And I've been mulling it over, and I haven't had time to do much with it. But, uh, Mm -hmm. Are there existing networks of, I don't know, the tree wardens or other existing networks tree that wardens. could be employed towards that goal? Yeah, no, that yeah. definitely. Yeah. You should, you should um, make a presentation. You know, if they meet regularly, right? Like the blue bonnet? Yeah. You, um, you should talk to Molly about the opportunity to make a presentation about that. How long have, has the complete streets been? It's pretty new, only a year or two. Which, which is which is part of the uphill battle because the new legislation they're loath to change it right away. Um, passing any legislation in the state house is very challenging. Yeah. Um, so no grand illusions, but really important, really important changes. It seems like that's the next big step in how we're going to lose trees. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Well. Um, I'm looking at my watch and realizing we have to um, we Five. have to move on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but they were on for that clock stopped, so I hope you're not. Well, thanks for coming. You're welcome to stay for yeah, the next section. Five forty-seven. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm thrilled that you guys are meeting and doing good work. Thanks. Let's uh, let's stay connected. Keep it up, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's really valuable. I mean, I we're indebted to you. Literally. You, you are the reason why, why we're here. I mean, we needed, we needed to hold on to a vision of what was possible, and you guys were that at the time. Um, so far ahead of us. I mean, we were just in a miserable place. So thank you for that. Um, one last thing is I did a half hour TV interview for a cable access uh, program that's on cable access TV, and I have the link, and I'll send it to you. Um, if you want to watch, yeah. I mentioned the nothing the committee. Oh, thanks. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, and the presentation you gave on that um, nerd night yeah. was was that the same presentation? You're describing something. Different? No, that's my own complete presentation. I've done yeah. different talks, but uh, this was just a TV interview. Has that one ever been um, videotaped? Because that's very entertaining as well. I don't think it's been videotaped. I'm yeah. actually going to try um, to get videotaped okay. and do it and then talk it this summer. Oh, nice. Henry's a great pre presenter. And, and he uses props that are very entertaining. You can't forget the straw. The straw is an awesome to, to, sim to simulate the way a um, water travels on a tree. Um, it's good. You take just that one piece away. Though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's locked in my brain. All right, well, thanks again. Uh, we're going to move on to our next agenda item. And Todd, you are going to be leading the discussion. Did, we, did you end up getting um I paper? did. Okay. And, uh, Getting some There's three going down that way. Okay. You guys have enough there? How many do we have? Enough for guests? Some guests. I have one. I do. Yeah. 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 I have my copy before you leave. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, I'm going to see if I can include it all the way through. All right. So apologize. No. Oh, halfway. Everyone's first time of. Uh, I have to be done.
possibly seeing this. So what you have before you is, is an outline. It is not a uh, set in stone by any stretch of the imagination document. And it is an outline of a uh, public shade tree planting plan plan. Um, so this isn't the planning priorities. This isn't the three-year goals. This isn't the site plan. But this is this att attempts to uh, break down an outline form uh, the deliverables of our process uh, when we are prioritizing uh, our planting uh, planting priorities, the roles and responsibilities of each of uh, the various groups at the table and our various subcommittees that we've created uh, over the last year. And then uh, with Rich's help, uh, a draft schedule uh, where each of those uh, processes slash deliverables would be taking place in kind of an annual cycle. Um, so starting uh, at the top, I list the deliverables, uh, and I think we've, we've touched on each of these, uh, and they might be floating around in uh, the Google Drives, et cetera, uh, but the idea is to agree on what our deliverables are uh, on a rolling basis uh, and our three-year goals, uh, which would be updated every three years and reviews, reviewed and possibly adjusted annually based on what we're seeing, getting back to the, the metric side of things. The one-year planting priorities, which would be updated uh, annually uh, with the corridors and neighborhoods and areas identified on a map, uh, identification of first tier and second tier priorities, um, and that's based on anticipating that things are going to change and that reality is going to happen and some of our point, some of our priorities may not be able to be um, done in, with the gusto that we were hoping. And then any, any tree species focus that we've identified, again, based on, um, uh, based on our analysis. Then you have your three-year goals, your one-year planting <coughs> priorities, and then your site plan, sort of what we got into with the Gazette site, uh, but on a more robust basis, and you'll see that there's the site plan subcommittee that we've identified. But this would be specific species-based planting plans on individual key sites or stretches of uh, road. Uh, and then looking at the metrics. So a plan is only as good as the uh, measurement uh, of it. And so looking at, uh, and, and also keeping in mind, uh, we'll get down to the uh, roles and responsibilities, but we're not gonna be able to measure everything every week. Um, but I think we can measure some things on a broad scale <clears throat> and then go for a deeper dive um, at the end of the year. So on a rolling month to month basis, by priority area measuring uh, the goals uh, and actual of uh, a number of setbacks, number of right away planting, and then further detailed uh, by the number of underwire and number of large scale trees. So I visualize a, a fairly easy to keep track of matrix uh, that keeps track of all those data points. So we know if we're, over, if we're just doing a bunch of underwires and we wanted to be doing a bunch of main street trees, we know that you know, after a month or two we need to adjust or at least keep that in mind. Uh, and then the tree keeper data, uh, which Rich, uh, you'll see, would be responsible for updated annually uh, to make sure that it informs our next year's uh, planting priorities and our subsequent three-year goals. So those are the envisioned deliverables of our planning process. And then we get into the roles and responsibilities. And I think each, each of us as individuals, certainly, and each of the subgroups that we are either naturally or finding ourselves gravitating towards, I think plays a really key role in the whole process. And I think what we have seen historically is that uh, those boundaries of responsibilities have kind of meshed and moved and changed uh, and the point here is to attempt to have clear roles and responsibilities for each one so we know what we're doing, we can track it, and we make sure that uh, we're, we're kind of following, um, following the goals and objectives of our, of our subcommittee. So uh, our group, the Public Shade Tree Commission, will be responsible for setting the three-year goals, uh, obviously in a public process. Uh, we're responsible for coordinating with the other departments uh, the plans uh, that the city has already adopted. Uh, and the city board, so really macro stuff here, uh, and then to review and approve all work performed by the subcommittee. 
Then the planting priority subcommittee, which already exists and has done uh, the work, I believe, for this current year, and I think you guys have really already set forth your roles and responsibilities, uh, but informed by the three-year goals established by uh, the overall committee, performs data analysis and field work to establish a draft one-year goals and priorities, uh, priority areas. Coordinates with the tree warden to inform the one-year goals and priority areas and establish its goals for planning by priority areas described in the metrics above, and then bring that draft one-year priority plan to the Public Shade Tree Commission for comment and or approval. And then once that is approved, then the site plan subcommittee goes to work, designing specific site plans for each priority area, identifying locations and tree species uh, on the site plan, coordinating with the tree warden on any specifics, and bringing draft planting plans to the Public Shade Tree Commission for discussion and or approval. And then Rich, obviously, uh, working uh, for the mayor, uh, would be preparing the budget in sync with the one-year planting priorities, uh, coordinating tagging, purchasing of trees identified in the planting plan, coordinating the schedule. Uh, you could, of course, the tree board may employ volunteer assistance as necessary. Rob, <laughs> certainly a key uh, part of that uh, process. Uh, responsible for providing the metrics to the Public Shade Tree Commission, as described above, and responsible for updating Tree Keeper uh, annually. And then responsible for the assessment and analysis of planting up uh, the mortality stress, et cetera, updating the public shade tree on results. Could you add that? Or did I put that? Where's that? On the back? On the back. On the back. back. Number of VII. Mm, no, not yet. Yeah, okay. Um, and then Tree Northampton, uh, as kind of the, the volunteer uh, king of trees, assisting the tree warding with planting, watering, and pruning. Uh, coordinating all volunteer activity as it relates to the uh, coordination with the tree board. And then our schedule, uh, just identifying kind of months, working through a whole process, uh, setting the three-year goals, uh, getting the priority plan done in January, getting the budget request. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. So I, this is my first time seeing the uh, months. Uh, but anyway, just like this runs through a monthly schedule uh, that I think we can keep track of and it'll help inform our meetings. So this was what you did, Rich, you added these dates? I, I okay. did, but, so, but it, I think we're, after, just to back up a little bit, I added these, and then after Rob and I had our five-hour foray yesterday, the gentleman that we met with at the nursery said that basically he needs, he can, his first round of ordering where you get the select trees actually happens in October. Mm -hmm. So that actually backs part of this out even further. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that we can't continue to do it this way, and we just end up, um, you know, continue ordering the trees the way we are presently for the time being, based around a planting plan, and then catching up, you know, in one of the three in one of the years in the three-year cycle where we actually have a planting plan set to go, or at least a species selection, and we can order them. Um, that way, if it, from nursery to nursery, it seems to, to vary, mm -hmm. and it would be much easier. I think Rob and I discussed this. It would be much easier to say, "Hey, uh, Colin or John, this is what we want. We would like them all in grow bag. You know, what, what are you going to do for us?" And obviously, we have to do uh, um, quotes as well. That also actually ties in a little better with capital planning. So, if we were to if we were ever to have to d decide to go in front of the Capital Improvements Committee to do a large scale project, sort of like what Amherst did, then we would have to have our capital project in by you no know, later than probably late September, early October. But presently, we operate using um, OOM or other, uh, other, other than ordinary maintenance, which is capital money inside the DPW budget. So it's just given as a yearly sum. So, um, so the, 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 this might, these might be a little off. So, for example, the B, 3B, the annual priority plan would really need to be done by September right. if by if, October. Right. Um, but, that, but that also, so that means that we'd have to shift the way that we just talked about actually doing our, our, neighborhood, uh, our, our uh, neighborhood pilot program. Yeah. So it almost like we'd have to back out a whole year yeah. and get everything stacked up and then get lined up to order the stuff in October or November. Um, uh -huh. 
Well, there's no harm in having it ready, and then if you no, don't need half of it until January for an order. It's not. It's just making okay. sure that there's just a lot of moving parts, and yeah. I think that uh, just having this actually laid out on a piece of paper is just helpful in itself yeah. because it, it kind of it kind of encapsulates, in a sense, what we've been doing as a group. Um, you know, and actually clearly defines what people have been doing, and it actually puts it all in one page that you can actually look at it and makes you think you know so I started reading this and I'm like well maybe this isn't the right maybe this isn't the right month to do this but I just put them in based upon what we had as our um, this what we have decided as of this year so far mm -hmm. so that can be changed obviously mm -hmm. can we assign months that really get us to our ideal do you want to take a different crack at this and and assign new months that are more um, because you know, it's arbitrary. Whether we do it in January and September, we're going to have to back up and work ahead of time. Um, and let's, you know, let's shoot for the ideal. The only way to do it really to, would be to actually have two years worth of planting priorities actually established. And the first year, let's say this is the first year of that one year, that we are basically still kind of doing what Rob and I have been doing, kind of got the carpet from the horse. We're, we're, we have these locations we want to populate based upon the the planting priorities, but we still have to go and get nursery stock. Mm -hmm. If you were to tell Rob and myself and um, the other sub, the folks in the subcommittee that you know next, so 2019s, 2019-2020s uh, planting plan is this area, then we could actually identify. You know, we could go with the locations, <coughs> identify, uh, try to get the correct nursery stock, and put an order in for the following year. Yeah, well, so we'd be ahead of time. So we'd be able to catch up. It would mm -hmm. just take. A little extra work in the first front loading, front loading yeah. in the first yeah. year. So it is, it is, it is possible, you know. Todd, do you have anything else to say about this before we open up for discussion? No, I don't think so. Okay. That's the general. All right. Outline. Okay, I'm opening this up for discussion. So, okay. there's, there's a certain amount of tracking and and, and um, paperwork involved. I guess will all be in Treekeeper. I mean, in other words, would you go in and make a site, and then I mean, how are you going to note down what we're? So that you know, that's a, that's a very good question because Treekeeper is um, you know limited in a sense; it won't be able to track. So we will have to find a way to track the actual projects and what we're doing. Right. Um, and then once we pick. The planting locations, then you can actually, if they're not in tree keepers' vacant sites, you can add them as vacant right. sites because that's what you have to do. You have to add it as a vacant site, and then you actually, when you go to plant the tree stock, you change the vacant right. site to an actual physical tree. Right. So that's kind of what tree keeper can keep track of yearly. Then you assign um, a, a planting project year for it, and you just click on that, and it just populates everything. So then right. you so can, can see it. you can see yeah. it on the screen over there where we planted the last. Two years, so, so you, it's not totally done, but I'm working on it. Do so you think that might be what would happen? Well, I think that would visually give you. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Tree, tree keeper, I can't. You can't do more than one search. Um, so if we were to do this, like with a GIS map, you can have multiple layers. Mm -hmm. Right. Tree keeper, and I can ask them if this is possible, where they we can actually do multiple layers, so they can actually see. Because uh, right now, I can only actually turn on one project at a time so when I assign so basically what happens is presently I go and I make a vacant site we actually populate we populate it with a tree and then I actually create a work order for that particular location and I do either mm -hmm. singulars or multiples based on where they are and then I assign a project name and the project name actually will show up on the screen if I click it and it will populate everything and you'll see where we planted huh. I just can't do multiple layers like a GIS layer could where you could click multiple boxes and you can see different color layers within that layer. I, I don't know if I can do that. I have to find that out from them. So that would be really helpful because then you all can see where we planted, you know, in the last three years or going forward, you know, we would have that data. We go and forward. It, yes, and you would have that data every year so you could see, that, okay, we've used up the 2,000 planting sites or we've actually exceeded it. Um, but I think the keeping Populating the tree keeper, finding the places to plant, or back up a little bit, the projects that we pick. You know, if, if, the, if the vacant spaces are not in tree keeper, we're going to have to pick, we can 
commission's going to decide what the projects are. We're going to have to see if there's vacant sites that exist. If not, we're going to have to create the vacant sites and we'll have to add them. And that's how you would keep track of that, yeah. that way. I, the way I see it on 1D where you've got the metrics, you've got two, two ways of tracking. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the first one, the rolling month-to-month -month metrics, can be a lot more back of the envelope. Oh, kind definitely. Of. Yeah. So yeah, I, had, I don't have it with me, but it, it's a simple like matrix that where you, you can keep marks. track of in the yeah. field, basically. Just yeah. so when we come to our meetings, we can go, okay, so in the last three months, we've planted you know, this many setbacks versus this many right away. Yeah, you can just keep track of that on a spreadsheet. Yeah, exactly. And so is that something you feel like you could do? Yeah, I think Rob, Rob, do that. Yeah. Rob, Rob already has some uh, no. of that. Yes. Yeah, 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 I have it. It's not. It's, it's not. Can it be on a spreadsheet? Unfortunately, I do it in, in Word, so it's just written down, like uh -huh. where every where the tree goes. If you if you get it to me, I can yeah can put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe I would recommend adding one more to that to that um, matrix, and that is um, ward location. Um, and I realize that uh, over the course of all of our 250 tree trees, we're not going to have perfect ward distribution. But if there's something glaring that pops out of us, uh, out at us, you know, three quarters of the way through the year, which is, whoa, we've done nothing in Ward Seven. That's that's a that's a little bit of a wake up. Um, could I do the spreadsheet? And would that be something I could yeah. unburden you yeah. with? I was going to offer too, but if you want, yeah, to I mean, there's something concrete I could yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That you don't have to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can do that. All right. So, so uh, are we doing it going backward or forward? No, I, I, I think we need just to start. Let's just keep it simple so we can experiment and start with this planting season. 2018. Yeah, so we can have a fresh set of eyes on what we've done so far. So what we've done so far, and yeah. then every time we do something new, we put it in. Yeah, and then basically we would just be a Google, Google sheet, and then we would just add, yeah. we just add the planting locations. Great. Excellent. So it'll be tracked in my tree paper and in another set. Yeah. this little yeah. informal way. For, for a little... The monthly a, dashboard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for a little micro adjustments. Okay. Unfortunately, um, we've, we've run out of time to discuss this. So I, um, I don't want to cut the, the um, conversation short. We can certainly pick this up next time. But I have to confess that I have to run another meeting at 7 o'clock, and that's why I try to um, schedule this meeting to end at 6.30. So um, is that OK? That this was an introduction to this, and that there will be an opportunity for more questions? So we could figure out the details of the spreadsheet or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. OK. Um, can I just do a little straw hat, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle, how you're feeling about this? Good. Yeah. Excellent. I, I, don't, I don't feel good about it. I think that it'll be like a overly burdensome mm -hmm. in that we're having trouble even just entering things mm -hmm. in the tree keeper, so mm -hmm. going even backwards. So we're like two years behind. So I see it as being... But that's the, but that's the problem, not the interval, but that's the problem, I think, because tree keeper is onerous. Yeah. And the idea is, as a commission, we should use that data to inform our future decisions. Yeah. But month to month, we probably don't need to get down in that level of the weeds. Right. We just need, we have our goal of overall number of trees in whatever area, whether it be ward or priority area, setback or not setback, and underwire or big. I mean, those are kind of like our macro goals. So just yeah. punching that out. I think if you keep it like idea. very macro, then yeah. you might be able to handle it. But turning, make it any more fine? I just don't think we have the, the time. No, I agree. That's why. I do. That's why, frankly, it doesn't need to be a spreadsheet. You need. It, you can do it by hand. On yeah. The back of the well, if Molly is offering. Yeah, yeah I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just I saying. Mean, Molly's they, always looking for. A no, I, think I have to right. say the spreadsheet is helpful for me because what happens is that. Um, you know, I, as Rob is, as they're planting trees, you know, we, we do deliveries and then we do cleanup afterwards. When Rob gives me the cleanup list, that's when I turn around and enter the tree keeper. And then I have to figure out whether it's a vacant site or not, or if it doesn't even exist, and I have to make one. And then I have to assign it all the criteria and all the drop down boxes. So it's yeah, time consuming. Yeah, yeah. So having a spreadsheet actually would be, would be helpful and very easy to populate. It actually wasn't the spreadsheet I was wondering about. It's the planning going forward, it's just the, t the time of planning going forward. Of, of, trying to figure out what trees we have and where we're going and, and looking. It just, I'm not sure who's gonna, who's gonna do all the work. Well, I think hopefully over time though, 
I, and I understand that and I get that because I, can, I was looking at this first and I was like, wow, this is, this is like a lot. We already do a lot of stuff already and now we have, yep. and I do a lot of stuff on my own that's not even in here, but that's a different story because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm part of, I'm the regulatory person, I guess you could say, but it just seems that this is a lot, but I think we're actually, if you actually looked, if you took this line by line, you'd actually see that we're already, really, already are doing a lot of this already. It's just that it's, in the I, wrong I don't want to use the wrong word, but I guess jumbled. Or in the different time frame. Or different time frames, because we're all, we all here are working at different times. You're all volunteers. Terry and I are only two that actually work full time at this, but you all fill in and we're all here at the commission meetings and we're trying to accomplish all this, but I think it's in here. It's just now it's an actual, looking like an organized form. Right, I mean, part of it is that ultimately you may actually enter it into tree or every no, tree. I, that's, but, that's but, but what this requires is entering, really entering it in a year or two ahead of time, that's all. It still gets, it's still the same work of entering it. Yeah, well, no matter what, you're still gonna have the same work because you have to enter the information. Right. No matter so what, in the end. Right. It's just a matter of- Doing what, it up front, right? Right, exactly. But uh, having it up front is better than having it backwards. <laughs> In my opinion, and that's kind of kind of what I. So I think it's key that if someone else yeah. can enter it, so you're not de entering data two times. That it doesn't seem like you have so much to do. The thing with I, yeah, I got, so. that's good valid question. The problem with Tree Keeper is that you, in my opinion, after using it all this time, you have to be a certified arborist to enter mm -hmm. the information. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, uh, because the tree risk assessment goes with it, you have to be tree risk qualified. Mm -hmm because of the system that we use. Oh. It's a little different than just entering a data point on GIS. Um, but we have another arborist on staff, he just doesn't have access to a computer at the moment. Yeah. All right, so Rich, if I understand, you're feeling okay about yourself? Yeah, I'm feeling okay. The only thing that I think is just, the only thing that's missing is that I just want to caution the commission that the commission is an advisory body. And the commission, in a sense, the way the hierarchy goes, the commission makes advisory, you know, um, is advisory to myself and the mayor. So we just have to make sure that somewhere in this documentation that we, the mayor's name is in here somewhere. Because we eventually, through me and through outreach from you, are actually lobbying him to get his approval for this plan. And that's one thing I don't see in here. Oh well. Um, I just want to okay, make. Okay, so wanna, just what you're saying is we draft a we draft a three-year plan, and then we, part of the yes, process is get his buy-in, bringing it to him, or or whoever right. the mayor may be after the right. 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 Yes, I think that's kind of important because if we go to do all this work and this present mayor says, "I'm sorry, we don't have the funding in three yeah. years' time," then okay. then we have to go back and to the drawing board and kind of figure out what we're going to do. So Can we just important. add that extra stuff? I think that yes. belongs so, way up at the top. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because, I mean, depending upon what kind of a plan we're going to have, depends upon what kind of funding we're going to ask for. So if we're needing for capital improvements money, which is going through the Capital Improvements Committee, which is different than a budget appropriation, then we need to have his buy-in because it goes through a whole process. At the moment, I don't see us, at the moment, planning 250 trees a year, I don't see us needing to go in front of Capital Improvements Committee for the money because we've been given forty to fifty thousand dollars every year through a, through a uh, budget appropriation. That's just one example of where we need to make sure that we have all the all of those ducks in a row. Okay. All right. So, Todd, we find a way of integrating that into steps. Yes. And one other thing too that I just wanted to say is that the other thing too is the way that MGL chapter 87 reads is that the tree warden uh, is the one that really has final say as to where the planting of trees happens and removal and trimming. So we have to, and I think we're going to cover that in here, but I just want to make sure that that is So somewhere. wherever it says and or for approval, it's really, it's it's really we're talking advisory yeah. everything is right. advisory okay. it's not approval as in it's set in stone it's that we are s presenting that to you as our advisory document correct yep. i think we all i think we all know this you okay. know that we are advisory committee there's no, nothing but, that we do that's but, which is fine but i just if this, this will become a public document at some point so mm -hmm. we just want to make sure that okay. that is mentioned in there so people lay people who don't know anything about our planning understand yeah. all the process of how it works. Yeah. That's all. Okay.
Good. All right. I, I'm going to have to move us around along a little bit more rapidly now. Sorry about that. Um, so we uh, planting planting update for 2018. Rich and Rob. Well, I think Rich touched on it. That, uh, we're out looking for more stuff because we've pretty well assigned the stuff we have, uh, and we're pretty well you know heading towards finishing up the spring planting. So that all is fine, but. Um, it's the fall stock is a little uncertain. Uh, we've got 45 trees at Amherst Nursing that we may have to trade out because they may not be in good, con good condition. Mm -hmm. um, we're not certain. Which is uh, the, some of the ginkgos for the fall project. Well, although we have other substitute ginkgos. other substitutes. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, have, we have a bunch of, not a bunch, but quite, a, I don't know, maybe half a dozen trees that died. Like maybe a dozen trees. I have, we have to, you and I still need to go around. There's about book. ten trees that yeah. died from, from this, or maybe eight trees that yeah. died from last year, and those trees are focused really on the PMB. Does that include the, the legends around? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so there, we, we want to make sure we get those replaced. Because yes. I, I don't want to leave those. Yeah. yeah. So this is a good example. The four of the ten lindens died. Do we know why? The, well, the rich. You know that. It's just, I think it's just desiccation. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but you know, they're big trees, big root balls. It's not how we usually do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the process we usually follow. And so, you know, being that I'm right there with the trees, it, it, I'm very good news that Rich has said that the northern nurseries might find us some trees and tree bags. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just they're hard to plant, and then you, and then sometimes they die. Yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, we did have a major. This is a death of a tree. The thorns, uh, honey locust died. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that has to be. Right. Although, oh, although I checked again today, it's still green. Yeah, I put a tag on. It. I saw you put Where, a tag in on. front of thorns. You said. Yeah. Oh, the, oh. the one that the store funded. The, yeah, the store purchased oh. that. So we're going to replace that plus so replace that, another tree. Right. On the other hand, everyone here thought for a moment that the library, two library trees, died, but they didn't. They came back. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good. All right. And we're really? and we're uh, we're. Oh. Ramped up now for aftercare, so I have enough staff to do all the watering uh, and all the mulching. You're going to have bags on all the trees. Yes. Yeah. So, so we planted 250 trees, and there's probably eight that are dead, which is fantastically good. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Good. You know, a couple key trees, the thorns tree being. Oh. I think it, that was due to compaction of the roots, because often there would be stuff around it. You know, it is. Rich has pointed out that that is a shady place, and so it was a little colder than some mm -hmm. of the other trees. Mm -hmm. um, it's, hard, it's hard to say. It was a very strange winter. It was very cold and very difficult. So mm -hmm. that, that was the second winter for that tree. Right? That was the second winter. Yeah. So, so but it was planted in that drought summer, wasn't it? It was planted in the spring. Uh, the spring before that drought. Spring summer. of sixteen. Yeah, it was a horrible summer. So. We really don't know. Yeah. I mean, we could plant it there, another one there, which we will do, and that one. But hmm. each one that dies, but the library ones, I think, were really, that was tough, because yeah. those are rare, beautiful trees. Yeah. Oh, good. That's All amazing right. they came back. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> it's amazing. Tree North Hampton? Well, we've been out every Saturday. Rich has been out there with us. Thank you very much. Um, exciting project done. Did anybody notice King Street? Oh, yeah. No. No. Where, trees along where on King Street? What, from, Hook, from, from Hooker Avenue to uh, going into town on the right hand side, there was a totally tree built that had nothing on it. We populated with nine trees. Wow, that's wonderful. Church. Uh, church. Yeah, church. Yeah. Church. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, down to. Got me. Thank you. <laughs> it's good yeah. to be We're trying to get neighborhood yeah. people involved in each planning. Um, pretty good at that. We had Councilor Nash out. He visited us twice when we were in his ward and helped on, was able to help on one of the days. And definitely continuing to follow the community neighborhood planting plan where we have people in the neighborhoods involved, invested, you know, feeling part of it. And of course, people come out always and talk to us and um, learn about what, what's going on. And there's we, yeah, there's donuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we planted on Elizabeth Street, and, and we had two people from the neighborhood, you know, from uh -huh. Lincoln and 
or through whatever. And then a colleague of mine drives out of town on West Hampton Road, is it uh -huh. called? 66, and is just so thrilled with the Baroques. We get we just get a lot of really good feedback. We played four or five. I saw a wild one yesterday. Oh really? Oh, yeah. I was out in Sheffield. Oh yeah, wow. that's cool. Yeah. But yeah, they're not around here much. Yeah. No. Yeah, so anyway, a lot of trees going in. <laughs> Rob is doing an awful lot during the week. It's a wonderful group um, of guys, and um, Saturdays we're having all sorts of people come and help. But Jen joined us today. So we're not oh, guys. great. Yeah. Jen Werner was out. Good. So it, it is a real busy time. Getting a lot of planting done. And how many have you planted so far this spring? I, I, I do know that. Um, it was 79 before it, so now oh. 85. Wow, we're sending 79 before today? Yeah, well, today we planted another eight trees. Wow. And, and tomorrow another six trees, and then on the weekend another. So we're, we're mm. you know, 20, How many days a week do you plant trees, Robert? Three, 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 three days a week. Three days a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's how we get the numbers we do, is yeah. 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 out there we're with these planting. people planting trees. It seems, it seems to really work when you actually set the planting days and the same people come on those trigger days because they just either have the time. Are they mostly retired people? Yeah, on the weekdays there's a group of retired, yeah. which happen to be men, it could be women, but there are retired yeah. men who come out and it's a group. Wonderful. That's wonderful. Retired men mm. planting trees. I, I had a lady, right. I had a lady cool. ask for, she saw our signs that I put out everywhere mm -hmm. and she asked for a, a, a tree, she wanted a tree for my house. I'm like, where do you live? She goes, I live, I live in Coal Rain. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, I, I can't give you a tree, but I can tell you how about how you should go about getting a tree. Do you have a tree warden? She goes, I don't even know. Yeah. I said, well, go to town hall and find out. You're supposed to have a tree warden. I said, start banging on some doors. Yeah. I yeah. said, please let me know if you need any assistance. I'll provide you with all the data you need. So, but uh, those actually have been successful and have steered uh, have steered us in. Uh, People have requested trees mm -hmm. because of those signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been. They stand out. They mm -hmm. look good. Yeah, right. yeah, they do. So that's another good way of advertising. And yeah. it's, uh, it's been, yeah, yeah. That's great. So that's it. All right, thank you. Um, any other business on anticipated by the mayor in four Maybe minutes? Next. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God! No, please. Oh. You're right. No. Was, huh? yeah, the yeah. announcement. Uh, by the chair. <laughs> See how similar those words are. On TV. <laughs> no swearing, guy. You're your job. Job. Cheers. <laughs> Another writing candidate. <laughs> stickers? Do you have stickers with you? Yeah, no, not yet. Uh, any other business? Okay. Um, oh, my daughter Madeline is meeting with um, Lori Sanders of Historic Northampton. So, and then Deb, Deb and Bruce, and all the person who attended our last meeting. So that's that's getting underway. Her her internship is going to start kicking in for doing the tree speech project. Lily, um, I'm available throughout the summer, but were we going to see you on a summer schedule? Um, you know what? Sounds like I need to do a doodle poll. That's a really good point. Uh, we're, so let's do that. I'll put that on my list of things to do this week. Doodle poll. And then I also think, I encourage the subcommittees to start meeting. Yeah. So I know the three of us, especially if we were going to try to get two Plus years ahead of the, yeah. of the curve, we can start uh, meeting. And then I encourage the site plan committee to meet just to me. They actually, uh, Jen, Jen did send an email oh, great. out, but I, I recommended that we waited until we this came to the table. Yeah. So now that it's okay. at the table, I think we'll try to convene a meeting. Okay. Before Can I throw out one more thing? Yeah. Um, we've been planning Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. And basically by, by 10 a.m. or so, we've really planted a lot of trees. If you can just spare two hours on a Saturday, mm -hmm. it's a great way to start the weekend. You yeah. feel really good. <laughs> and it's great when you see the trees. Mm -hmm. And it's fun, and it's we get a lot done in a short amount of time. So if anybody's available, um, please, two hours. You won't miss those hours too much Saturday morning. Yeah, and you know, the Amherst Tree Committee, they're people that actually do more planting than they do this sort of thinking work than we do. Mm -hmm. That's where they're all oriented. And we're a little bit 
opposite in that way, and that we're more heady and, and less kind of getting our oh, hands to the ground, with the exception, strong exception of Rob and to some extent Jen. And so I think you'd have I a feeling more feel for the work. Yeah, yeah. if you and got out for a couple of hours, you'll have yeah. a stronger with feeling. Your kids yeah. talk? More hands on. <laughs> yeah. <He's naughty. laughs> Okay. Old, All right. Old sure. yeah. <laughs> You're old enough to plant trees. Yeah. yeah. Eleven and nine. Oh. We we yeah. plant trees at eleven and nine. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We were all working in the yard. We had a three-year-old the other day on on Holly's. On the yeah. Yeah. He was. He kept saying sorry. Sorry, all my lawn as we speak. Uh, just one. We one can push dirt in a hole. Yep. So uh, June June. Can push June. dirt in. Oh, yeah. June 12th, yes. um, we're going to be hosting uh, about 10 kids from JFK. Mm -hmm. We're going to be at uh, Lampton Park in front of the uh, first year school, planting um, at least one tree in Lampton Park and maybe one inside the cemetery. Okay, and are they going to be doing any chestnut tree? I need to watering? coordinate that with Paige. Paige. I think there might be a little... Okay, what time did you say? Uh, nine, he said between 9 and 9.30. Have ten there. Kids. So I have to respond to him. I'm going to tell him where to meet us and okay. we'll go from there. And Rob and I kind of walked around and identified some locations to plant some trees over there. So Tuesday, June 12th. 12th. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like that baton has been fully passed and I don't need to think about that. No. Okay. No. Great. Uh, to do list. Oh, we're going to go around the room. All right. I'll start with myself. I'm going to do a doodle poll for the summer. I am not seeing anything else on my list, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, so I am going to continue to follow up with the uh, national grid about CDH. Um, I'm going to uh, vet the significant tree ordinance. Um, I don't know, do a bunch of other things that I normally do. Um, I'm going to meet with the uh, subcommittee at home. Well, the other thing, too, is I'm not going to be in the next commission meeting. I'm going to be here until July. And what about Terry? I'll be here. You'll be here? Okay. Well, I do think we should consider whether or not we should meet without you. You are kind of critical. To well, if you want to, if you do the doodle poll, then we can. It'll pop up. It'll pop up. Okay. All right. Yeah. As of right now, that's the plan. Okay. All right. So to be determined in the doodle poll. Um, so are you done with your. Yeah. I, uh, Todd and I are going to have to probably have a sit down and talk about the uh, uh, local tree ordinance. Or, or slash tree impact permit issues. That can be as well. <coughs> All right. oh, um, well, sh shall we meet our subcommittee? Yeah. Okay. So we need to schedule a meeting. Yeah. I can stop that. Yeah. If you want. Okay. And you're continuing to work on legacy tree. Yeah. Okay. Any news about? Uh, that veterans no, project? Nothing. Okay. Uh, update the outline and meet with the Rich to figure out the public shade tree permit process going forward. Um, meeting with the little subcommittee. Um, I'm going to be away next week and through next weekend. Okay. All right. And you're also creating a spreadsheet. That well, yeah, but not yet. Yeah. We're waiting till next meeting to figure out right. what's actually going to be on it. What the okay. columns would be. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. You're up, Rob. Well, I'm going to hopefully, I think, finish planting in the next three weeks for the season. Yeah, you're going to not get injured. That's what you're responsible for. Yes. <laughs> it, is, it is interesting to make sure everyone, I mean, I do act like some other hand on the job. From being injured. So in three weeks, then um, I don't really know what I would do after that. A break, or else. Yeah. Maybe. We just can't see it. And you know, it may not happen, but we hope it would be done in about three weeks. With the rate we're, the current rate that we're planting, we will is pretty much exhausted the tree stock that we have. Okay. All right. We need a motion to adjourn this meeting. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.